Tender Ray Beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony Transcribed. K is for Kroger. C is for Cut. B is for Beef. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef. And Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. Yes, Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste. And the reason is this. Before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Mind you, that's before the meat is weighed and priced, which means more meat for your money. And it's top U.S. government grades of beef. It's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbles with just the right amount of flavory fat. Yes, in Kroger cut beef, you get a better value in top grade beef. For example, take a specific cut of beef, say a Kroger cut chuck roast. Before the roast is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess waste and stringy meat. That means you get a better value because you get more solid meat, only a minimum of bone. Yes, you receive more meat, less waste, whether you buy a steak or a roast. So visit your neighborhood Kroger store soon. Get Kroger cut beef. It gives you more meat for your money. And now, hearts in harmony. Lovely Penny Gibbs has never known happiness for too long at any time. But these days she seems assured of happiness forever. For Peg Martin is gone. And though Peg appeared to be Penny's friend, she was actually her bitterest enemy. This afternoon, Julie, Peg's little daughter, asks Penny... Aunt Penny? Mm Mm-hmm? Why did Mommy go away and not take me, too? Oh, she couldn't take you, Julie, because your grandma isn't well. And your mother has to spend a lot of time with her. Oh. Well, you don't mind staying here alone with us for a while, do you? Oh, no, Aunt Penny. I like it here awful much. I hope you do, darling. Oh, I do. Uncle Ted tells me stories, and Uncle Freddy is silly. <laughs> and that's why you like it here. Oh, yes, it's fun here. Well, you're very sweet to say so, Julie. But you must be kind of lonesome without other children to play with. Oh, I don't mind that, Penny. I have my dolls, and I like to play by my own self. Sometimes. So you do miss the other children, hmm? Well, Julie, your mommy will come back for you pretty soon. Take you home where you can be with your friends again. I wish they'd come here to play with me. It's much more fun here. Is it really, darling? Oh, yes. I like grass and trees and, and pretty flowers. At home, everything is sidewalk. And people are always chasing us away. But there's a playground to play in, isn't there? Yes, but little girls can't go there alone. And Grandma and Mommy don't like to go there. Oh, I see. Well, I'm glad we have a nice yard for you to play in here. Maybe your mother will bring you back on a visit someday and you can play in it again. Do I have to go away, Aunt Penny? Well, you want your mother to be happy, don't you? Yes, but there's no place to play. Why did Mommy have to go away? I told you, darling, because your grandma's sick. But she will always be sick. Why can't Mommy come back here to stay when Grandma's well? Julie, listen a minute. Your mommy isn't happy here. And you don't want her to be unhappy, do you? Oh, no. Well, then you should be glad your mother's going to take you somewhere where you'll both be happy. Where's somewhere, Aunt Penny? Oh, I don't know. I imagine you'll be home for a while. And maybe they'll have a yard at the next place your mother goes to live. Oh, do you really think so? Mm, probably. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if there'd be other children to play with, too. Lots of them. Oh, I'd like that. But, Aunt Penny? Mm-hmm. Aunt Penny, I don't want to go away. I like it here. Julie, I'm glad you do, but... Well, how do you know that you won't like it even better somewhere else? I like it here enough. (laughs) Julie, that's not the way to discover new things and learn new things. And you do want to learn new things, don't you? But I I can learn here. You can't learn about other places if you stay here. And, Julie, it's fascinating to go other places and see new faces, new people, new things. It's exciting. Every new place is is like a party. It's so exciting. And you do like parties, don't you? I guess so. I like the ice cream and cake. (laughs) I don't blame you. So do I. And that gives me an idea. Maybe we'll have some for supper tonight. Would you like that? Oh, yeah. All right, then. Suppose you went out in the kitchen and asked your Aunt Nora. Oh, there's the doorbell. I'll go out and tell Aunt Nora right away. Aunt Nora. (laughs) I said to ask her, darling, not tell her. All right, I'll be down. 
Hello, Penny. Hello, Barry. Come in, darling. Well, how's my beautiful girl this beautiful afternoon? Wonderful, thank you. Then you feel the way you look. <laughs> Barry, are you playing hooky from the office again? Well, I cannot tell a lie. I left the office a little early, but I had a good reason. Appointment, hmm? Uh huh. Appointment to look at you. And you'd be amazed at how lovely you look to me, even on office time. <laughs> you know, I don't need a car or company to believe that this is a good way for you to sell their paper. Oh, but it is, darling. One look at you and I feel so good, I go out the next day and sell reams of the stuff. Oh, darling, you're very wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but couldn't you wait until this evening to see me? Oh, no, the evening's much too far away. And besides, I'm not sure I'll get to see you tonight. But I thought we had a date. We did have, and we still do, if I can get away tonight. Oh, you're working at the office tonight, hmm? No, no, I was going to phone you about this, but I thought it would be more fun. And, well, I'd at least be sure of seeing you once a day if I came and told you. Mother said this morning she wants to see me tonight. Well, that certainly can't take all evening. No, it shouldn't, but there was something about the tone of Mother's voice that made me feel as if, uh, well, I wouldn't get away from her till late. Oh, Barry, that can't be too much of a hardship. We've seen each other almost every night for months. Mm -hmm. She's hardly seen you at all. That's true. And I guess she'll see even less of me after we're married. You know something? What? You used to sound so strange when you talked about her getting married. <laughs> now it seems so natural. Barry. What? You don't have any idea what your mother wants to talk to you about, do you? No, not the slightest. You see her several times a week. Do you have any idea? No, I don't. Well, I'm sure it's something serious. Mother seemed so preoccupied for the last few days. But then it might not be anything at all. Well, I hope it isn't anything serious. You'll tell me as soon as you know. That is, if I'm supposed to hear about it. Darling, we're in love, remember? Mm hmm And we're going to be married, remember? Mm hmm So we're not going to keep things from each other. I understand that's part of the secret of a happy marriage. So let's remember not... That's enough coffee for me, Barry. Save some for yourself, son. I don't think I care for any more, Mother. I've had enough for now. Here, I'll give you the sugar. Thank you, just the same, but I'll help myself. Did you have a good day at the office? Mm-hmm. Fair. I quit a little early, though. Went over to see Penny. I'm glad you saw her today, because I don't think you'll be able to see her tonight. We have a great deal to talk about. I guessed that much, Mother. My son, I have never in my life been as happy as I was the day you came home and told me you were in love with Penny Gibbs. And we're going to marry her. Well, I never doubted that you'd approve, Mother. I guess you liked her long before I did. I knew her long before you did. And I thought when I first met her that she was the kind of girl I'd want as my son's wife. Well, it won't be long now, next month, and you will have acquired a daughter. My son, when I heard you and Penny were to marry, I was the happiest I've ever been. But for the last week, I have been the most miserable. Oh? Why? Because of something I didn't tell you, but must tell you now. And then, I'm sorry to say, you will be miserable, too. Mother, what's the matter? Sit down, my child. And believe me, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to do. In all my years, I've never had to do anything so heartbreaking. But it's something I must do. Yes? Bye, my son. There is... Insanity in the Carlton family. No. Had your father lived another year, we would have had to send him to a sanitarium. I don't believe it. You know I wouldn't lie to you. You know I wouldn't tell you this fearful thing if it were not the truth. In the last six months of his life, your father did not stir from this house, didn't know the servants, didn't even recognize me. And death by violence spared his father from ending his days in an institution. Why didn't you tell me this before? There was no need to once, my son. When it seemed that you would be nothing but a waster and a troublemaker, ambitionless and weak, there seemed no need to tell you. I couldn't add a blow to the cruelty you'd already suffered. Then why didn't you tell me when I came back and Penny had straightened me out? Why didn't you tell me then instead of now, now that I'm in love with Penny and she's in love with me? Why didn't you tell me before I asked Penny to marry me? My child, I had no way of knowing that there would be anything serious between you and Penny. Much as I wanted it, I didn't dream that you two would one day plan to marry. And you didn't ask me if I thought it was all right. You told me you'd already asked her. That's right, I did. But why didn't you tell me then, before we made plans, Mother? Penny and I... Oh, Mother, why did you wait so long? 
Because I hoped against hope that things would be different with you. I looked at you and studied you and listened to you. And I could see none of the signs of mental failure I saw in your father. Well, Mother, you had no right to set yourself up as a judge. Too many lives are at stake. Happiness of too many people. I know. It was wishful thinking. I realized I could not be judge. So I wrote to Dr. Lawrence. What did he say? Well, I was afraid he would say when I wrote him. Would you like to read the letter? Oh, just tell me what it says. There it is. No, no, don't even do that. I can guess what it says. The risk is too great. There's no knowing about these things. What may happen or who'll be hurt. That's the gist of the doctor's letter, my son. Why, why do things have to happen the way they do? Why did you buy my way out of trouble so many times? Why didn't you let me rot somewhere in some cheap hoodlum's dive, not caring who I was or what happened to me? Why did Penny have to change me? Why did I have to fall in love with her? Why did I suddenly want to have a decent life and future and suddenly hear about this? If you want to be bitter toward me for telling you this at this most inopportune time, I, I don't blame you, my son. But uh, I'm only a mother who wished happiness for her child so strongly that I, I was tempted to steal it for you. Mother, darling, you know I don't blame you. It's not your fault that things are as they are, that I am what I am. I love and respect my father still, but I wish for my sake and for the sake of those I love that I were more you and less him. Well, Mother, what am I going to tell Penny? What can I say to her? That will be the hardest thing of all. But, Barry, you know what you must do. Yes, Mother, I know. I know how hard it's been for you to tell me this. I know how difficult it'll be for me to tell Penny... How will Barry tell Penny what he's just learned about himself? Will this tragedy destroy Penny's happiness forever? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. K-C-B. K-C-B. K-C-B means Kroger cut beef. And Kroger cut beef means more meat for your money. That's right. Kroger cut beef gives you more meat, less waste. Because before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. For example, if porterhouse steak is your favorite, you'll find that at Kroger's you don't pay steak price for stringy ends and waste. The Kroger method of cutting beef removes the long stringy end and excess waste before the steak is weighed and priced. But see for yourself by visiting your Kroger store. Notice that you get more meat, less waste. And it's top U.S. government grades of beef. Beef that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. Remember, whether you buy a steak or a roast, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. Yes, everybody's happy when you go to your neighborhood Kroger store for Kroger cut beef. Your family loves the deliciousness, the juicy flavor of Kroger beef. You love the way it cooks up so perfectly. And your pocketbook loves the fact that Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat for your money. Get some without delay. Get Kroger Cut Beef and get more meat, less waste, at your neighborhood Kroger store. Be sure to listen in Monday, same time, same station, for another absorbing transcribed chapter of Hearts in Harmony.